In this lesson, we'll discuss how the polymerase chain reaction, known as PCR, is used to amplify specific genes. And we'll be doing this by answering a question, which reads, assume you're using PCR to make multiple copies of a gene, shaded in below. So this is the DNA molecule, notice that it's double-stranded, and the gene is specifically what we see highlighted. Describe the overall process and diagram the results you would obtain for one, two, and three rounds of PCR replication using the primers ATGTT and CCATT. Now in the past year or so, we've been hearing about PCR tests to test if a person has COVID-19. And essentially, if any foreign DNA is picked up, it should show after several PCR cycles are conducted. If after 30 to 40 cycles don't amplify any of the genes specific for COVID, then the person is deemed safe. For simplicity, I will only be showing you the first three cycles, and the primers we're using are unusually small. Normally, primers are at least 17 base pairs long, and this is done to reduce the possibility of amplifying the wrong segment of DNA. So once you've obtained your sample of DNA, the very first thing that you want to do is break the two strands apart. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds, and you need to heat up that sample to 95 degrees Celsius. In step number two, to stabilize the DNA, you will lower the temperature to between 45 and 60 degrees Celsius and apply the primers, the ones that were discussed earlier. These primers will stick to the single strands, and specifically, the base pair rules here apply. For example, since A base pairs with T always and G base pairs with C always, ATGTT will base pair with TACAA. So let's see if we can find that in this strand of DNA. In fact, it's right there, T-A-C-A-A. -A -A. So I'll write down the primer over here where I have A-T-G-T-T. The five prime end will be at this nucleotide, A, and the three prime end will be at the other nucleotide on the other side being T. And the reason why is because if you look at the single strand, we have three prime on the left side and five prime on the right side. So the complementary strand needs to be the opposite where we have five prime and three prime. For this primer, expect to find a complementary strand being G, G, T, A, A. Let's see if we can find it here. Here it is. G, G, T, A, A, so I'll write down C, C, A, T, T, the primer sequence. This will be the five prime end of the primer, and this will be the three prime end of the primer. In step number four, once the primers have annealed to the original strands of DNA, then the TAC polymerase can start to build and synthesize the rest of the strand. TAC polymerase is a polymerase enzyme that is obtained from a specific type of bacteria that can live in high temperatures. So this is harvested from that bacteria and used for this purpose. And what it does is it acts like the polymerase enzyme found in our cells, where it adds deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates, represented as DNTPs, to the open three prime end of the DNA primers. So if we were to illustrate this, we would erase the three prime ends and we would continue writing out the complementary nucleotides. A complements with T, A, 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 C, A, G, 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 T, A, A. And it would continue. And the same would apply for this strand. So after one cycle, we will have two complete strands of DNA. So one cycle, I'll represent cycle by the letter N, one cycle leads to two new complete DNA strands. All right, to represent that mathematically, 
we write down 2 to the power of n. So now we have two complete strands of DNA after one cycle. Now we will do this again for the next cycle. And now you can see why it would be expensive to perform this type of test at a large scale. So in the next cycle, again, we do the heating, cooling, primers annealing, and the TAC polymerase to elongate the DNA strands. But this time, this time it will happen on both of these. So this one will split, and so will this one. So I've gone ahead and drawn out these two DNA molecules over here nice and neatly. And you'll notice that to the left of this base pair, there's no complementary strand. And that's what we would expect since it started from here in the five prime to three prime direction. And similarly, there are no base pairs to the right of this nucleotide. Now after heating this up, it splits and it begins to look like this. So again, we'll use those primers. Those primers will attach to their respective complementary base. Remember those primers were these. So I have A, T, G, T, T. That's five prime and that's the three prime end and it would continue to grow in that direction. And for the other primer, it's C, C, A, T, T. C, C, A, T, T, that's five prime and that's the three prime end, it would grow in this direction. The same logic applies over here. Let me go ahead and do that really quickly. So after the TAC polymerase continues to synthesize the remaining daughter strand, we will end up with four pieces of complete DNA. So remember the cycle is number two and we use the formula two to the power of n so 2 to the power of 2 means that there will be four copies of the original DNA that we had. Let me show you what these molecules would look like if I had written down all the base pairs. As you can see, we have the four complete DNA strands. And then in the third cycle, these would split up again. And the primers would do their job. So I just want to separate these. You can see them nicely. The primers would do their job and TAC polymerase would continue to synthesize along that direction and along that direction for each of these. And rather than confusing you with all these letters, using the formula two to the power of this time, the cycle being the third cycle, we would have eight copies of DNA. Eight copies of DNA where the DNA segment of interest is being amplified each and every time. Then, after X amount of cycles, once the polymerase chain reaction has been completed, a method called electrophoresis can be used to check the quantity and size of the DNA fragments produced. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.